Hi Year 7s, uh, welcome to your Skill Builder lesson. Um, we're going to be looking at reading maps, um, why it's important, why it's an important skill to have and how you do it. Um, sometimes these are the kind of skills that people might take for granted. Um, we have maps all around us all the time on our phones. Um, your parents might have a map in their car telling them where to go. Um, there are really particular ways to read a map. Um, and during geography this year, you'll actually be creating maps too. So it's important you know how to read them and you know what the important components of a map are and why they're so useful. So I'm gonna run you through a little bit about that now. So maps represent parts of the world as if they were looking down from above. The map maker or cartographer simplifies the plan view from a vertical aerial photograph or satellite image. Cartographers use color and symbols on the map to show how features such as roads, rivers, and towns are organized in a spatial way. There are six features that should be included on all maps. To help us remember these, we use the acronym BOLTS. Maps are used to show features so that we have a deeper understanding of places. When traveling, maps are essential to navigating unfamiliar places. So a good map has BOLTS. I'm gonna show you this picture here just to explain exactly what BOLTS is. So the B in bold stands for border. This is a box around the map to clearly show its extent, orientation, oh, sorry, its extent, sorry, I read that wrong. Um, o stands for orientation, a compass direction. So that's basically north, south, east, and west. The L stands for legend, which is a key to what the symbols and colors on the map stands for. The T stands for title, and that describes what the map is, so your title has to be very clear. The S stands for scale. We talked about scale with our posters. The scale indicates distances on the map. And the last S is source. So to explain the source, this is used to explain the source of the information for the map. Where possible, this is the information used to make the map that should be, should be sourced. Most importantly, when you're making a map, you have to make sure this map is accurate and neat. Otherwise, it really defeats the purpose of a map. Understanding map legends. When you look at a map, you quickly notice the colors and symbols. The legend or key lists and explain the colors and symbols used on the map. The legend is usually found next to or in a corner of the map, or it may be located in a special reference section. Cartographers overcame the difficult task to show all features of an area on a map by using symbols and colors to show point symbols, for example, a church, line symbols, for example, roads, and area symbols, for example, a forest. Many maps use the same symbols to help the reader instantly recognize features. For example, blue lines represent rivers. These conventional symbols are usually drawn to look like the objects they're representing. The many symbols used in atlases and other maps are small. It's important that you keep your symbols small when making your own maps. Maps often show features that can be seen from an airplane, but they also show features that are not visible from the air. So I'm going to show you a map now and we're going to, I'm going to go through the steps of how to actually analyze this map. So identify and carefully read the title of the map because it will provide you with an understanding of the information you can expect to see on the map. So if you have a look at this map here, the title is just above the key. The title of this map is Major Vegetation Types in Australia. Sometimes the title tells you the date of the information that has been mapped. Now this map has a title that tells us it is the map of Australia and it's showing major vegetation types. So vegetation being uh, different sorts of shrubbery, different sorts of uh, plants, that kind of thing there. The colors in the key help us to understand the distribution of vegetation. So have a look at these colors. A very dark green indicates closed forest. A slightly lighter green indicates open forest. Sort of more of a grass green indicates woodland. Orange indicates shrubland. Brown indicates scrub and heath. So that's sort of dark, dank, dank sort of no, no plants around whatsoever. Um, kind of a lifeless area. And the light, light green indicates herbland. So next we want to examine the key. We notice that closed forest is found in about half the area of Tasmania. So just down the bottom of Australia. 
Small linear coastal tracks along parts of the east coast of mainland Australia and in the Otway region of Victoria. We could make a similar detailed description of open forest. Looking at the pattern of forests overall, we can conclude that only a small area of Australia is forested, less than 10%. Now we know that because if we have a look down the east coast of Australia, and if you look at your compass, just above the scale on the map, the east is sort of to your right. Um, that's where most of the forest vegetation type is. Um, as you move sort of west on the map of Australia, you can see there's a lot more orange. Um, so if you're familiar with Australian environment, this orange section is all desert. So you can see why that particular area doesn't have a lot of vegetation in it. Interestingly though, it doesn't have no vegetation. There are some areas, but it certainly gets drier as you go to the west side of Australia. Now that I've talked you through um, some of the ways that you can look at a map and you can identify key features of a map, I'm actually gonna get you to apply some of this knowledge to some questions. So there's two ways that you could do this. You can grab one of the handouts that I'm gonna provide for you in class, or if you prefer to do it on your computer, there is a Schoology task for you to complete as well. Good luck and I hope this has been helpful.